Yes people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel, hope you are well. So today's video is all about the 8 to 16 f2.8 wide angle zoom. It's a lens I've been putting off for ages because I couldn't justify the price. However, I was always curious about the optical performance and from what I've heard, it's meant to be fantastic. Also, I'm not a huge wide angle photographer, so that was another reason not to get it. And I had the 10 to 24th video anyway. However, after sitting on the fence for ages, I found a good deal and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. And in this video, I'm gonna do an unboxing because I literally just got it. And then later on, as I use it more, I'll do a first sort of impressions of this lens. This is not a full on review like all my other lens videos because I need to use it for at least six to 12 months before I can give you any real feedback on what this lens is like to live with. And let's get straight into the unboxing. So, starts there. Yeah, paperwork. These are the little pouches that come with all Fuji lenses, they're great. More paperwork. bit of a origami and there it is got a bit of weight to it so a couple initial impressions very initial impressions as I'm taking out the box the focus ring is so much so sort of easier to turn than on the other f28 lenses you can do it literally just like with a finger like that um, it'll be interesting to see what impact it makes to actually manual focusing with this lens the other thing it's a bit bigger than I was expecting, but it's also a bit lighter than I was expecting. Everyone was saying it's really heavy, but honestly, it's not that bad. Maybe because it's a bit bigger, you think it should be heavier. But yeah, first impressions, good. Before I go any further, I wanna talk about use case because I think it's very important. What matters to me might not matter to you and vice versa. So please understand that as you watch the rest of this video. To me, what's important? Well, first and foremost, photography is always number one and video is number two. Also, weather sealing, build quality is critical. I don't really want to have a lens that's not weather sealed because then I'll be scared of using it in rain, dust and dirt, which is where you can get some of the best pictures. And I'd rather not have something that will limit me from getting a shot. Image quality is very important to me, but I am not a pixel peeper. I never ever zoom into my images at a thousand percent and study every pixel. I just don't do that. So as long as it looks good like, like that, I'm happy. However, one thing with image quality that does matter to me, well, two things actually, is color reproduction. The colors have to be very rich, very nice, and also the fact that there's no real distortion. And with this, there isn't, but we'll get into that in a minute. Let's talk about ergonomics and build quality. And yes, this is big and it is heavy, especially compared to the other lenses from Fujifilm. It's definitely bigger and heavier than the 16 to 55 f2.8 and if you're used to the f2 primes then this will feel like a complete brick however it's not such a big difference that it will stop you from bringing it with you i thought when i first got it that man this is going to stay at home it's just too big but now i've done two hikes with it and honestly not a problem at all now i will say it definitely makes more sense to be mounted on a bigger camera like the xt4 or the xh1 and if you have an XT30, for example, it's gonna be way too front heavy and uncomfortable. So that's one downside with this. It's designed for the bigger cameras. Other ergonomic factors to keep in mind, the lens cap is just like one piece, this big thing, because the lens hood's integrated. Honestly, it's not a problem at all. The only pain in the ass bit is if you put it in your pocket, it just bulges out, but whatever. Um, you've got the aperture ring, which is cool. The focus ring, now this is very loose and very light. I mean, when I say loose, I don't mean like broken, I just mean it's very light to twist it compared to the other F2.8 zooms. Now, whether this is a positive or a negative, I don't know. I need to use it a bit more. I can certainly see it being a positive because with one finger, you can just do the focus. I can also see it being a negative because if you set your focus and you accidentally knock it, then there goes your focus but we'll cover that in the full review later on. In terms of the zoom, yeah, fine. It works like a zoom, no problem. As for build quality, let's go back to the zoom and there is definitely some play in the zoom ring, certainly more play than what you get on the other F28 zooms. 
Um, it's not a problem, it's just something that I've noticed and it's not really going to impact how the lens works or anything like that, at least not that I've noticed so far. Um, other build quality things to consider is the glass itself is completely exposed. You cannot put filters on this lens. So you are basically, if you scratch this or damage this, you are screwed. Now, you do have this integrated lens hood, but honestly, I don't think it offers a huge amount of protection. When you zoom in and out, the entire element comes in and out. So I guess if you're at, what is it, 16 mil, the front element is more hidden, so it's not as exposed, but at eight mil, it's definitely really exposed. So I guess if you're just walking around, then set it to 16 mil, and that offers a bit more protection if you're not gonna use the uh, cap. Apart from that, the overall build quality seems very good. It's very sturdy. It feels premium. Obviously, I can't talk about any weather sealing just yet, but if it's anything like the other lenses, no problem. Now let's talk about autofocus, and to be honest, there's not much to talk about. Just like all the other F2.8 zooms, it's got linear motors, which means autofocus is instant, it's quick, it's reliable, it doesn't hunt too much, but most importantly, it's completely silent and completely sort of step or jitter free like you get on the older lenses. So yeah, no complaints at all for photo or for video. It's fantastic. You're not going to have any issues. Now I start to understand why this lens costs so much. It simply doesn't bend lines or doesn't bend them that much at 8mm, which is 12mm full frame equivalent. And I find that mental. In this photo that you can see here, I am basically standing on top of this bench. I was literally like a few inches away from it. Yet, it looks completely normal. Obviously, you can tell it's a wide angle image, but it's not that horrible fisheye, super distorted wide angle image that we're all used to. In terms of color, this has fantastic color reproduction. It definitely brings out all the colors in the scene, just like the other zooms. Um, and there's absolutely no complaints there. Now, in terms of sharpness, obviously, if you're gonna have it at f2.8, at 8 mil, you are gonna get softness in the corners. There's no way to get around it. However, if you stop down a bit and maybe zoom into like 10 mil, you're gonna get a fantastically sharp image that you're gonna be happy with. Now, let me touch on a few negatives about this lens, especially for those of you who are focused on video. First and foremost, you can't fit filters or traditional screwing filters. What this means is that if you, let's say, using a frame rate of 25, the shutter speed has to be double, it has to be at 50 to get the most natural image. If it's a bright sunny day outside, you will be overexposed within a second. And if you can't have a filter on this lens, you either have to stop down to like 22, which will then introduce diffraction and make your image quality suck, or you have to increase the shutter speed, which will make the overall image a lot more jerky and look a bit weird. So that is definitely gonna hamper a lot of people who are mainly doing video. The other one is the fact that because this lens is so wide and it hasn't got inbuilt stabilization, you're relying on the IBIS or the inbuilt stabilization of your camera. However, IBIS and a super wide lens creates this weird warping effect around the corners. And from what I understand, it's physics, there's no way to get around it. The easiest way to get around it is if the lens itself is stabilized. And because this isn't, you're gonna get that. So at about 12 mil onwards, this does tend to fade away. But if you're spending all that money on a lens which does like eight mil, chances are you'd wanna use it at eight mil. So for me, it makes this lens almost unusable at eight mil for handheld video. Obviously, if you're gonna lock it off on a tripod, that's a whole different ball game. And I do see myself using it for that. So let's say if I'm out hiking, I want to film myself, put it on a tripod, 8 mil, no problem at all. But certainly for handheld stuff, it's going to be an issue. So to summarize, for photography, this lens is incredible. Um, I can't wait to start using it. And I will definitely get into more of the wide angle side of things the more I use it because the images are just so good. For video, this is not the best lens out there, to be honest. And if I was mainly video focused, I would actually get the 10 to 24 and just deal with the fact it's F4 and not weather sealed. So should you buy it? Well, from what I've seen so far, if your main priority is photography and you do architecture, yes, no question about it. It's gonna be worth every penny. 
If however, your main focus is video, or you're not fussed about having f2.8, or you're not fussed about having 8 mil or weather sealing, then just get the 10 to 24. You'll definitely get more value for money and more use out of the 10 to 24 versus this. And this makes it quite a specialist lens, I think, which is probably why it commands such a high price tag and also why it's so big and heavy to fit all that glass inside. Again, this is not a review, so that will come in about six months time. If you do have any questions in the meantime about this lens, drop them down below. I'll be answering them as I'm using it and as I'm learning more about it. But that is all for today. So thank you ever so much for watching. Hope you're doing well. And yeah, see you in the next video. Bye for now.